Ladies, welcome to another fantastic session of Ladies Beyond Flying, another session which is indirectly powered by Lunch Club, because a couple of weeks ago, Anne and I, we had a fantastic Lunch Club conversation about hormones and biohacking, and I thought that is an awesome topic, especially also for our Ladies Beyond Flying global community. My name is Daniel Stecher, Vice President, Anne and Operations, IBS Software. It's a big honor to have you with us. And um, yeah, and I think uh, the stage is yours. Introduce yourself because I have not enough words to introduce <laughs> you, but um, I was already really um, amazed about our conversation and I'm looking forward to the upcoming 60 minutes. Well, thank you very much, Daniel. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I'd like to welcome all of those, all of you who were able to make it in this time slot. So my name is Ann Traeger. I am a, a certified human potential coach. I am a biohacker. I help people optimize themselves, okay, for whatever their goals are. Um, I'm particularly passionate about the notion of energy management, and which actually just brings us right into our topic because you can't talk about managing your energy if you don't talk about hormones. But before I get into that, I kind of just would like to throw this out there as a question is, what do you guys actually think this webinar is about? Anybody want to just throw that in? <laughs> throw in an answer? I think we heard something a little in the conversation ahead of time. Hello, Anne. Aisha yes. speaking here. I would say that this is about how we can um, you know, use what we have actually to, to be better. So rather than hiding all the time or pretending that we don't suffer from particular issues, we can use it uh, to our advantage. OK, OK, great. What I want to get at in this, does anybody else want to say anything before I move on? Yeah, it's Kristen. I want to tag on to that. And and right before, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. What you said was brilliant. Um, Hormones and emotions are not necessarily things that need to be managed. I've realized in my older years that they can be used to our advantage in the sense that they might help us see something that we wouldn't see if we were in a, I don't know, a very calm state, if you will. So I'm, I'm thank you, Anne, for doing this. I'm very, very interested. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Well, thank you so much. So when people say hormones, okay, uh, uh, you know, with the quotes around it, okay, you got that. You often get this image of, you know, a woman pulling her hair out uh, and some like uncomprehending man looking down at her and, you know, not understanding at all what's going on. It kind of like the image that, you know, that somebody we know, you know, used uh, for this. OK, so my proposal with this talk is to completely shift our mindset around hormones. OK, because hormones, first of all, are not exclusive to the female body. They are the male body has them as well, okay? Hormones are these incredible chemical substances that are responsible for nearly every body function we have. So in addition to the sex hormones, which get so much attention, there's the, there are all kinds of other hormones which, we're, which don't come to mind when we say the word hormones, such as cortisol, okay? Cortisol is what allows you to run away from a lion if you ever need to do that. It also is what wakes you up in the morning and it's the hormone that allows you to get out of bed okay it gets a really bad rap because we all have so much stress that we're constantly on a, this cortisol drip okay and then it causes problems but actually cortisol is a wonderful hormone i mean thank goodness we have it right insulin is another hormone but it allows you to metabolize you know carbohydrates and fat to eat that piece of cake, okay? Uh, growth hormone is what's gonna allow you to put muscles on when you do a workout, okay? Melatonin is a hormone and it allows you to sleep. So hormones are not at all what make you crazy, okay? They are what make us alive. Please, th th that's my mindset shift. It's just we have to think of them as vital substances. They are life itself. It, they're these signaling substances. It's just kind of like, I don't know if anybody's watched The Crown, but there's this fabulous I image in there of the old time uh, telephone um, operator 
So you have, you know, like making those connections, okay? And it's like super complicated. And those connections, those, those connections, those are like hormones. They're responsible for our energy levels, for our digestion, for obviously reproduction, for growth and development, for how we respond to injury, how we respond to stress, and any number of environmental factors. And of course, they impact our mood, among so many other things. So as I said, hormones are life. So as you know, so what we want to do first of all is to take really good care of them. Okay. And I'm not going to go deep into the science of hormones here, and I'm not going to give any medical advice. So, you know, if you, if you need to see a doctor, go see a doctor. Okay. Uh, what I want to introduce is this really pragmatic idea that there are two steps. You understand your hormones, all of them, whether you're in a male body or a female body. Okay. And you use them to your advantage. Okay. This is, I, I just think that's just, first of all, a really interesting thing to do, but also is the best thing we can possibly do with them. Okay. So let's see whether, so, you know, and again, whether you live in a male body or a female body, we all can benefit from understanding these hormones and hormonal variations. Everyone has them. Everyone has hormones and everyone has hormonal variations. Okay. In the day and throughout a lifetime. Okay. So I'm a biohacker. Biohacking, for those of you who don't know, is the, what well, my definition is the art and the science of optimizing your body, mind, and environment so that they work for you and not against you. This is my thing. Okay. Um, for me, biohacking is a methodology. It's not just a bunch of little hacks. It's a methodology. And it means taking an experimental approach to finding the best solutions for you, okay? Because your solutions will be completely different from my solutions because we're two different people, all okay? right? And the first step in this methodology is understanding how things work. And then, uh, and today what I'd like to do is really to like lay the foundation of, you know, two things that I think are really important about hormones. One is just keeping them working well. And the second is, well, how can we optimize them, whether you're a man or a woman, okay? And in particular for women, because it's a little bit more complicated, okay? So first of all, just really quickly, and none of this is new, okay? I'm not gonna throw out anything really mind boggling when it comes to how you keep your hormones working well because it's all the basic stuff we hear all the time, but you really have to do it. Stress management, okay? You know, we've, we've briefly seen that we have a number of different hormone systems in the body, okay? And that they regulate the body functions, okay? But none of them are separate systems, okay? They all run, are run by this master hormone, which is called the GNRH, okay? Which, and, and this hormone that runs it all, okay, is extraordinarily sensitive to stress, okay? Um, you know, if we have a peak of stress, it's going to then shut down all of the non-key body functions so that you can run away from the lion if you need to do that, okay? And if we are in chronic stress, it's going to shut them down well, as well, and you're going to have bad digestion. And if you're a woman, you're going to lose your period and so on and so forth. Stress is like so key to keeping your hormones healthy because we can't talk about optimizing them and using them to our advantage if they're not healthy. OK, so that's the first thing. As human beings in small quantities from time to time, we do thrive on stress, but excess of any stressors will create hormonal imbalance. OK, so key thing. Okay, that's just a species thing. OK, we, we need to be able to respond as a survival thing. OK. Uh, we need to be able to respond immediately. And then again, if we don't have the resources or if we're on our chronic stress, we do not want to be um, like procreating, for example. So you want to be aware of anything that's a stressor, including excessive exercise, including fasting, which is all the rage right now, uh, sauna, cold therapy, all of these things, although they can in small quantities be really good for you, in excessive quantities they are not, they will throw your hormones off track. Okay. Um, there are a number of other stressors. I like to think of stress in terms of overall load. So if you're eating f factory bred animals that are full of hormones, you're throwing your hormones off right away just by what you eat. Okay. 
So, you know, it's it's a really global thing and we don't have time to go into the details. And I'd like to leave some space for questions at the end. Um, so first thing is stress. Second thing is sleep. Sleep is really key for hormones. Sleep is actually key for everything. It's your everything hack, okay? It's the mainstay of your recovery. It's when your muscles repair. It's when your memory consolidates. It's when your brain cleans up uh, everything. And when the body releases hormones that will regulate growth and appetite, um, it will release hormones that will regulate repair of your tissues that will stabilize your energy, okay? So sleep is a full tune-up. Sleep is really, really, really key to keeping your hormones healthy, okay? Um, the other thing that I think was worth mentioning when we're talking about sleep is that, and hormones, is that the, the body, um, when you talk about hormones, the body actually needs to process the hormones. Like, like it will make them and then it has to get rid of them, and the liver does that, okay? And the liver does that when you're sleeping, okay? And it does that during a certain period of your deep sleep. So one of the best possible things that you can do to take care of your hormones is to be in bed by 10 p.m. so that you can deeply be deeply asleep between 1 and 3 a.m., which is when your, deto your body will detox the most, okay? So we don't talk about those kinds of things usually. We just say, oh, sleep is important, all okay? right? Well, so now you know. So, and then the third uh, element that's really, really key to hormone balance and is how most of us can actually, if we're not in any significant imbalance, um, can right the wrongs, okay? And that's through food and the right nutrients. You need the right macro and micronutrients in order to make the hormones you need. It is totally beyond the scope of this talk to go into the details here, okay? Just want you to know that everybody has that available to them. If you want to talk about it more, I, I'm going to share a, uh, a link with you um, so that, you know, you can reach out and you can have a call with me and it's free. So, you know, there you go. Um, the thing about food is that you have to have um, you, you, you want to like make you want to make sure you have what you need to make your hormones. So something as simple as a large glass of water and right when you wake up in the morning with a little bit of sea salt in it will actually top up your cortisol levels because we just said earlier that cortisol is what gets you out of bed. So then you top it up with a little bit of salt because your adrenal glands need salt to make cortisol and you actually can keep your energy levels going a little bit longer in the morning. Cool, that's hormones too, okay? Um, you know, when it comes to food and nu nutrients, as I said, there are also like so many other things that can, that can impact your, your hormones. Um, balancing your blood sugar is really important for hormones as well. And so women being more, um, having greater hormonal variations during the month and being more sensitive to stress because, you know, if you're under stress, you don't want to have a baby. So your body's going to shut you off. It's biological. So that's why we are more sensitive to stress. Okay. Balancing blood sugar is a really, really good way to start getting a handle on some of these um, some of these hormonal variations. It really works, okay? I, it also can make you, like, it also impacts how, you, how hungry you feel because that's a hormone and how satiated you feel because that is another hormone, okay? So by carefully choosing what you eat, you can trigger the hormonal response that you are looking for, okay? Um, if you want just a really, really quick and three word primers, it means making sure that you get enough healthy fats, that you eat lots of veggies and leafy greens, that you have high quality protein sources, and that you don't have too many carbs, but you don't have too few of them either, and they should be complex and they should come from whole food, okay? That's really, really quick, okay? <laughs> but anyway, add to that some exercise, some intermittent fasting, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and a few blood sugar hacks, and you've got it down. It's not rocket science, okay? And I know I'm talking to a lot of people in the aerospace industry, so you guys are rocket scientists or whatever, or pilots or whatever. I mean, you you got this stuff, okay? <laughs> it's easy in comparison, okay? So these are the basics that can really, really help you have healthy a healthy hormonal balance, okay? But so as I heard all of you say, you wanna go further. You wanna know 
how you can be like the most productive and powerful self that you can be given your hormonal variations, okay? And one way, um, you know, one really powerful way comes down to like being, what can be summarized, this is how I decided to do it, to summarize it by focusing on two different cycles, okay? Um, and there are two different cycles that affect both men and women. Okay, well, one cycle affects both men and women on a daily basis. So there's a daily cycle. And then one affects women more profoundly, and that's the monthly cycle. Okay, so we're going to look at that in, in, in a little bit more detail. But first of all, the daily cycle. Okay, we are circadian creatures. We all follow a 24-hour clock, and we rely on the sunlight to regulate it. Now, I imagine that if you're working in, you know, if you're a pilot, then you know all about <laughs> this because of, uh, you know, uh, time change and, and, and jet lag and the whole thing. But it's really worth repeating because it is so, so crucial. Getting full spectrum light exposure in the morning, that's 10,000 lux, okay? Not some tiny little dinky little, you know, lux quantity. It's 10,000 lux. That's like daylight before sunrise, okay? It doesn't have to be the sun. It just means daylight, okay? And getting that full light exposure directly modulates energy hormones. It impacts your wakefulness and your sleep. Every morning, no matter what time zone you're in or what time zone you came from, if you go outside and you get that sunlight, it, sunlight, it is going to tell your brain to get things going, okay? Um, living as much as you can by the circadian rhythms is going to be life-changing for anybody, okay? And the problem, of course, with our modern world is that uh, we are chronically disrupting our circadian rhythm and not only people who fly around the world all the time, okay? What creates, uh, you know, we're getting way too much, uh, well, we're not getting enough of that daytime light signal because we're inside all the time, okay? And we're, not, and we're getting way too much at night because we've got all those bright lights on, okay? So this is creating hormonal disturbances, okay? Uh, I, there are a ton of hacks that you can do with light. And again, you know, reach out to me if you're interested to act, that actually have a like huge impact on your cycle. OK. And on how you live your cycle just by managing light, which is kind of amazing. If you on top of that, you add food. I, I mean, it's it's really, really incredible. OK. So that's to sort of when you have dysregulation, you've got to regulate it. And using the circadian rhythm is is important. So step number one to follow your is to follow your circadian rhythm as much as possible. OK. Um, I suggest you go further um, than that for your hormones and to start with something which is called circadian fasting. OK. Which basically means not eating anything between sundown and sunrise. OK. It's a very, very simple hack to do because. Frequently, you're sleeping between those hours or at least a better part between those hours. So you don't even feel hungry. And just by circadian fasting, you can start to regulate your your hormones in a in a very, very different way. OK. Um, so that's the first thing about the circadian rhythm, the daily rhythm. The second thing is that in a day there will be shifts in various hormones. Cortisol, for example, will rise in the morning and uh, then it sort of stays uh, like this. And then it's going to have a little peak in the beginning of the afternoon. And then it's going to have a bigger peak at the end of the afternoon. We all feel it. We blame it on digestion or whatever, but we feel it's, it's actually just a natural cortisol rhythm. Um, and when you start paying attention to that, you can use it to your advantage. I never, ever, ever um, will put uh, a, a really important, you know, contract negotiation at a time when my cortisol levels are low, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense, you know, because <laughs> I, I can't focus as well. Okay. So that's one. You also have, as we talked about, uh, you know, you have melatonin, which is going to, uh, which is going to rise in the, in, in the evening when the sun goes down, it's going to allow you to sleep and then it's going to dip in the morning, which is why you get up. Okay. Um, Men are affected 
men have a specific, well, we all have a specific cycle that it, during the day that concerns testosterone, which affects men more because they have more testosterone. Okay. It, um, means that in the morning, testosterone is going to rise at the same time as the cortisol levels rise. Um, and it's going to make you really, really efficient in getting things done in the morning, holding meetings, powering through, that kind of thing. In the late afternoon, testosterone is going to wane. Okay, It's going to go down about the same time as cortisol. Okay, um, And actually, at that moment, for men, they become more sensitive to their estrogen because men have estrogen too, just in smaller quantities. So they get really involved in this, like connecting and socializing. Okay. Does any of this sound familiar? Like the typical corporate day, you know? Um, and then in the evening, testosterone is really, really low. And that's a time for the man cave and for powering down. Okay. So actually the corporate like schedule is based on the daily testosterone rhythms of men, okay, which is, which can create significant low level stress for women who are really in tune with their own cycle, which is entirely different. But that's quite interesting. Does it mean it's always better to schedule an pay rise meeting in the afternoon and not in the morning with your, with your boss? Because maybe. Well, so that's, yeah, well, so uh, that's the whole thing. The more you know about it, then the more you can integrate that into your strategic planning. OK, so in effect, you know, I, I, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, if you want if you want, you know, promotion, uh, then you do it at the end of the day when it's all when, it, when he's being all friendly and stuff like that. I don't know, whatever. Okay? You got to think about it. OK, <laughs> but, so. So that's the thing about the daily the daily rhythm and, and, and my invitation is rather than getting too much into the science of it is to just observe what happens for you. Women have daily cycles as well that are related to hormones and what you eat and all the rest. And you just pay attention to it and you start respecting it rather than trying to overcome it. OK. So that's the first thing. And then there's the notion of the. So that's the circadian rhythm. Then there's this notion of an infradian rhythm, which is like beyond the day. And in the case of women, it is more or less 28 days. OK, so women from puberty to menopause um, have this whole other set of hormones in play that impact energy levels in different ways. OK, um, and. With this knowledge in mind, people in females, if the people in female bodies can actually discard that cultural conditioning that says that hormones have this negative impact on our capabilities, OK, if you can disregard that, if you can overcome that mindset and actually take on the mindset of, wow, I have all these cool emotions and I can do incredible things with them, then you have a really, really, really unfair advantage over men. OK, like totally unfair advantage. OK, so first of all, you're not the same every day. And then if you start noticing the shifts, you can schedule your days and your works and your work so that they they go in they're in tune with your hormones and you can make them work for you to sustain your energy, your creativity, your productivity. You can play to your strengths to get the most benefit from the brain, your immune system, your metabolism and your microbiome. The four big key areas that are impacted by your hormones, by your by your specific uh, um, sex hormones. OK, I'm going to give a quick overview. There's a lot of information here, but I'm going to be just there were four uh, because I want you to walk away with like really key information that can help you. OK. There are four phases to a to a monthly cycle. The first is the follicular phase. OK, during that phase, estrogen, your top a dominant uh, female hormone, OK, rises when estrogen rises, it boosts your brain's working memory capacity. That is just so amazing. OK, it boosts it. So it means that you it also boosts your creativity. OK, so it means that during that first phase of your cycle, you are going to be really, really good at handling complex processing, at solving problems, at strategizing, at planning and, you know, taking on new projects, uh, brainstorming, doing research, being curious. Your energy levels are super high because of this estrogen. OK. It's a really good time to do cardio workouts because it's going to uh, your body reacts really, really well to them and it will like 
uh, boost your metabolism, okay? But you have to beware always when we have high energy levels like that is that we don't overdo the stress because if we do, then the body like stops metabolizing and goes into conservation mode and it creates a whole bunch of a cascade of problems, okay? So phase number one, great for planning and strategizing, follicular phase. Phase number two is a little shorter. It's the ovulatory phase. And during the ovulatory phase, you have estrogen, which is going to peak, so a higher level yet, and testosterone peaks, okay? So you have energy to burn, okay? It means you are, you've got incredible mental sharpness, you are highly creative, and you've got really good communication skills, okay? Um, your physical energy will be at the highest. Uh, it's a great time to be uh, for to be like emotionally outgoing, to be you're upbeat, you're revitalized for connecting with people. It's a good time for really intense workouts. Um, it's the phase of communication and collaboration. Okay? That's the second phase. And third phase, next is the luteal phase, when progesterone is at its highest. Okay, progesterone is another beast altogether. An incredible, incredible hormone with, that does all kinds of things for the body. Um, and in this particular case, it often will make your energy start moving inwards, okay? Um, it's combined with a kind of desire to get things done, okay? The ratio of estrogen to progesterone will make your brain notice things that are around you that you don't normally see. OK, so it's a really, really good time to prioritize details, you know, anything that, you know, detail driven responsibilities. OK, anything that you desire to wrap up, it's a really good time of the month to do it. Uh, it's a good time to slow down a little bit on the social out, out, outreach if you don't feel like that is what you want to be doing um, and to do things that make you feel good. It's a good time for deep work, you know, that notion of just cutting off all of the the distractions and working on one thing. Um, just physically speaking, it's a good time to focus on lean muscle gains, strength training at the beginning of the luteal phase. Towards the end of the luteal phase, the hormones are decreasing. Okay, so and so you want to at that point shift more to flexibility. Okay, so it's a kind of time of completion. Okay. And then the final phase is the menstrual phase. And during that phase, all of your hormones are really low. It's a perfect time to rest and relax and reflect, okay? Your brain is really, really good during this phase at evaluation, analysis, intuition, okay? Of connecting to like that stuff that you can't quite see most of the time, okay? There is a particularly strong connection between the left and the right brains uh, during this, uh, during the menstrual phase, okay? So low, low hormone levels can make you feel restless. And at the same time, you're picking up on all kinds, you're making all kinds of connections you weren't making before, okay? Um, energy levels are at their lowest because your hormones are at your lowest. So it's a time to really like count on restorative activities. Okay. So that's like a super, super brief overview and condensed in you know just a few, uh, um, you know, a few minutes, basically. Um, I want to get to questions, but first I would like to broach the other uh, cycle that impacts women, which is menopause. And I, I and we could also talk about andropause because there's a, a, a shift in, in male hormones as well, uh, midlife. Menopause is huge. Andropause is um, huge as well. OK, but I only actually address menopause because we just talked about women during. Uh, this is a transition to an entirely new hormonal balance. OK, and. The shift in hormones will inevitably affect everything, as we've seen, because hormones affect everything. OK. Um, Again, I, you know, I wish I could do a whole, like several conferences on menopause and what you can do. The process of dealing with menopause is exactly the same as dealing with your monthly cycle or your daily cycle, okay? It's paying attention to what's going on, understanding what is happening, and then figuring out how to adjust and find ways to use it to your advantage. 
There's a whole lot of biohacking that you can do around menopause to make it, first of all, more comfortable because it, it can be quite uncomfortable. There are sudden hormonal shifts, uh, but it doesn't have to be uncomfortable and it doesn't have to be the end of the world. And you don't have to have brain fog when you're going through menopause. OK, so there's so much you can do. And a lot of what I'm talking about when it comes to, to, to hormones comes down to something with which I believe in phys- philosophically as being really, really important. And I believe that at every moment we're making these choices, okay? And the choice that we have is a really basic one. We can either be a victim to our hormones or whatever, or to what people are saying about it or anything, okay? Or we can be a hero. That is, we overcome, we do what we have to do, okay? And it's a choice that we make. And so I think it's a choice that we make also about how we're going to, you know, be empowered by our individual hormonal makeup. So in the title, I had said, are, you know, are your hormones superpowers? Well, I I believe that they are. And like any self-respecting superhero, which we are, okay, the superhero must first realize that they have superpowers. Every superhero story is the same way. Superhero doesn't know it and then finds out, okay? And then they have to learn to use those superpowers to their advantage. And so that's my invitation to you um, with this quick talk is to become familiar with your superpowers and learn how to use them (laughs) to your advantage. I gave you a few hints. Again, we can talk about it more. Biohacking is a methodology that I use for this and that I help people use for this. Um, If you're interested in that kind of approach or just to talk about it, reach out to me. I'm going to put a a link somewhere. I don't know where I can put that. Uh, There must be some sort of um, chat somewhere. You can use the chat feature, but um, maybe we can also share this with the uh, recording of the session. Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, And I don't actually know where the chat feature is. So, uh, yes, I will find it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, what would be interesting, and thank you very much for this. Of course, I'm very interested to... Uh, understand why so many men um, go for Harley Davidson and start during their midlife crisis these crazy uh, stunts and so on. But understanding that um, you you can be very creative if you have uh, this part of the cycle and so on. Um, is there then also something that let's say getting older and having passed maybe menopause um, and also men going through their midlife crisis? that with missing hormones, we are in something better than when we were younger. And the question is the following, because of course, being a best ager or an aging employee, maybe there is a threat being replaced by younger people, but maybe there is something that older people have exactly hormonal advantages based on, and that's why they are more creative, they are better in planning, they are better in strategizing and so on and so forth. That's why that would be interesting to know. Well, I think that there's a lot that goes on. Um, I think that the whether it's menopause or andropause, that it's going to be experienced differently uh, for different people. There's also a lot that um, um, is that you can do um, through, you know, natural means and through bioidentical hormone replacement in order to uh, actually, you know, keep up those healthy systems. Basically, when your hormones start declining, it's it's a down it's a it is it is downhill. Okay, it is downhill, and it has really it can have really really negative impacts on uh, your body and on aging. Okay. It, it's a fact. OK, so there's a, a, incredible work has been done on bioidentical hormone replacement for both men and women. Um, it's a very interesting solution to um, uh, to look into with the appropriate professionals. Uh, um, if you want to have extended health span um, and an extended lifespan. OK, um, that said, I agree with you. And I'm sure that if you are healthy and that you do uh, become aware of the changes and, and, and you can find your superpowers in that time, you know, during those periods of menopause and, 
or post-menopause and post-andropause, okay? It's the transition that's the hardest because the transition is when you're shifting to a new balance, okay? And then it depends on how you're going to be managing that new balance, okay? Now, maybe maybe you can share some uh, secrets or some hints when it comes to nutrition. So, of course, I'm also taking here my B12 um, supplement and vitam vitamin D supplement and so on. Is there a, a specific fruit or something which you recommend to eat beyond a certain age because it's exactly maybe equalizing a missing factor here and there? Is there something? Yeah, there is so much that you can do to balance out. Your, I mean, I, it, 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 you immediately get into, depends on what you're trying to fix and what the goal is. The keys are vitamin D. Obviously, you need vitamin D for just about everything. So vitamin D is really, really important. Magnesium is really important. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids are really important for hormones and for your brain. And so, I mean, I don't think that uh, talking about, I think that those are basically anybody could take them. Again, you have to check with your healthcare person and so on and so forth to make sure that, you know, that it's good for you. Uh, but those are, they're the basics. They're the basic building blocks for anybody and everybody. Um, and yeah, so Isha says that, uh, that the vitamins mentioned by Anne and Daniel have been game changers for me. Well, yeah, absolutely, because those are the basics, okay? Truly, truly the basics. Um, uh, and beyond that, I really cannot respond to your question with any more specifics than to say those are the basics for everybody, because then it depends on what your goal is, okay? And earlier you were mentioning um, that, of course, people eat certain food, which are a hormonal treated from the industry mm -hmm. um, it, and maybe you can give an example a certain soda has an ingredient and because this is exactly resulting in and so on because that's uh, I think unfortunately we don't learn this at school but we get a lot of marketing and advertisement around and we exactly go for the wrong food and then as older we get we get into something but we have already started maybe to to eat for many years the wrong the wrong thing so is there something yeah so so the basic um the basic again to keep it a little bit generic because it depends on but the basic idea is to get is to eat healthy fats okay so healthy fats are things like butter and coconut fat they're you know eggs all of those things you were told you weren't supposed to eat because of cholesterol well actually we need a certain amount of healthy fat okay And again, I have to say this because it's going public. Um, if you have a cholesterol issue, you're going to have to check with your doctor, okay, because I don't want anybody blaming me, okay? Uh, but we need, you know, hormones need a certain, a minimum level of healthy fats in order to be produced, quite simply, okay? Um, you're going to want to eat a lot of fiber, so green leafy vegetables. I mentioned this earlier. Um, Because the fiber and the green leafy vegetables is going to allow your body to, like, to help the liver to function and to detox all of that. Because when you have hormones, then you detox. We talked about that, okay? Um, uh, you're going to want to eat really high-quality protein. So you want to source your meat. If you eat meat, you want to source your meat. You want to know what's gone into your meat, okay? Eating organic is a good step in the right direction. Uh, because the, but maybe it's not enough. You have to really, really source your meat well and make sure that you're not getting a lot of endocrine disruptors or hormones in this case in, in, in your meat. Okay. Uh, same thing for farmed fish. I would just completely avoid farmed fish because of what they're eating. Okay. So if you're going to eat fish, you eat wild caught fish. Okay. Um, and there are sites that will tell you exactly what kinds of fish and so forth you should be eating. Um, Uh, carbohydrates is uh, is a stickier issue. We find carbohydrates are going to be difficult for for the gut, and if it's difficult for the gut, then it's going to be difficult for your hormones. Okay, so the idea is to reduce the refined carbohydrates, and when you eat carbohydrates, you, and overall to reduce the quantity of carbohydrates, but not too low because you need some, and particularly women need carbohydrates. Okay, but to have those carbohydrates be complex carbohydrates. Okay. So those are the basic things, okay? Sugar, 
refined sugar is basically poison. So, you know, it, it, you can have a little from time to time because it feels good, but basically it's poison. So, you know, there you go. Um, th that's sort of just a basic um, overview of, of what you can eat. And with that in mind, you can do a lot of different things and balance your hormones. Okay. Fantastic. Are there more questions, Christine, Alexandra? Aisha Tashini. I wanted to, there are some comments here. Um, uh, Christine says, uh, people who identify as non-binary also have to manage their hormones. And for them, the challenge can be exacerbated by their own biology and society. May, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, 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 completely. And I think that, you know, uh, The more we open up to figuring out how we as individuals can manage our own uh, hormonal and biological individuality, then, you know, hopefully that means we also open up to much more compassion and understanding for other people and their own individual hormonal balance and individuality. Mm -hmm. Are there any, any other, other questions? questions? Aisha here again. I don't actually have a question, but I'd just like to thank you. I think it was very insightful. And um, just recently, actually, I tried to to follow similar to what you're saying in, in terms of planning certain tasks when I felt better, but I didn't necessarily realize it was being based on my hormones. I thought it was just how I was personally being affected. So to know that actually feels like I have a little bit of armor and mm -hmm. uh, justification rather than feeling that I'm just alone in in how I'm setting up my agenda so yes I said not a question but thank you very very insightful well well you're welcome Isha and I think that that's uh, uh I think that that's such the right step is like to observe what's going on with you you know and 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 to take it from there and and it is nice to know I, I find it personally as well comforting to know that Well, it's also just my biology, you know, and so I want to figure it out. I want to get a handle on this. You know? So, yeah, good, good for you. So then, and thank you very much. I learned a lot. I will um, following up with you because I want to understand also um, the anthropos and um, maybe prepare um, myself for the future. And um, mm -hmm. I already learned that I do a lot correctly because I go regularly. Uh, at 10 p.m. Uh, sleep and um, wake up early and so on. And the, yeah, I think uh, um, knowing these things as early as possible is really uh, helping to have a more comfortable life and uh, also understanding the other, why they are maybe not in the in, uh, in the good mood or why not making mm. a meeting in the morning, and all that stuff. So I think that was a fantastic takeaway from your session. Well, thank you. It was so, a pleasure. Uh, conclude the session and uh, your offer is that uh, people can connect with you and can get more advice that's what i understood yeah 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 so on the link uh, people can sign up for uh, for a free session basically with me and we can talk more and discover a little bit more about what i do so then next week we continue with the next uh, aviation women panel on uh, 19th april uh, ade funke from Ayeta is going to talk about the challenges and opportunities in the African aviation in market and uh, looking forward to have you all with us again. And uh, um, yeah, please stay healthy and safe. And thank you again, uh, Anne, for this fantastic session and uh, uh, looking forward to have you soon again with us. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.